day, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you, as always, for joining our daily reflections. My name is Father Evaristus Abu, and I present to you today the Liturgy of the Word. Today is Friday, 2nd September, 2022. It's Friday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. Our Bible study today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 5, Psalm 37, and the Gospel of Luke chapter 5, verse 33 to 39. Let us now open our readings and reflect together and the word of God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, this is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. I do not even judge myself. I am not aware of anything against myself, but... I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time. Before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart? Then every man will receive his commendation from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 37, and our response to the psalm is, from the Lord comes the salvation of the just. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will dwell in the land and safely pasture. Find your delight in the Lord who grants your heart's desires. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him and he will act. And make your uprightness shine like the light and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Then turn away from evil and do good and you may abide forever. For indeed, the Lord loves justice and will never forsake his faithful. The unjust shall be wiped out forever and the descendants of the wicked destroyed. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. But from the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Their stronghold in time of distress the Lord helps them and rescues them, rescues and saves them from the wicked because they take refuge in him. From the Lord comes the salvation of the just. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. He who follows me will have the light of life. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, the Pharisees and scribes said to Jesus, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He told them a parable also. No one tears a piece from a new garment and puts it upon an old garment. If it does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. If he does, the new wine will bust the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wine skins and no one after drinking the old wine desires the new for he says the old is good the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ glory to jesus honor to mary and joseph i hope you paid attention to the readings the first reading from saint paul's letter to the corinthians is part of the admonition of paul to the corinthian church because in that church there was division over paul and apollos some say they are for Paul, some say they are for Apollos. And St. Paul is telling them today, do not pass judgment before the time, because God alone is worthy to pass judgment. And God will come at the right time and expose those things that appear to be hidden right now. In our gospel passage, even the disciples of Jesus they were victims of premature judgment. The Pharisees and the scribes came to Jesus saying, Ah, the other people are praying. The other people are fasting. But your disciples, they only know how to eat and drink. And Jesus responded to them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is still with them? Then we come, the bridegroom will be taken, and then they will fast. But the point here is, we should avoid passing judgment on others because we do not know everything. Only God who sees the heart, who sees the hidden things in the heart is worthy and capable of passing true and excellent judgment. Let us now go through our reflection for today. Do not pronounce judgment before the time. Once upon a time, 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 a little girl was holding two apples in her hands and her mother asked for one. To her mother's surprise, the little girl held one of the apples and beat it. She chewed it with delight and then waited for a while took the second apple and beat it also. The mother felt embarrassed by her behavior. Then after a while, she held 
one of the apples to her mom. And with the purest innocence any child could master said, Mommy, take this one. It is sweeter than the other one. It is in our human nature to judge people, whether good or bad. Most times, our judgment is not correct because our judgment is based on what we can see and we cannot see everything. As they say, behind six is more than seven. Sometimes our judgment is based on what we think we know about other people. But the truth is that since we are not God, we cannot know everything. And the third reason why our judgment is often wrong is that we judge people based on who we are. If I'm a thief, for instance, I believe every other person is a thief. Because I believe in stealing, I believe that is the way of life. So also, if I am a just person and I don't believe in cheating others, I also would think that every other person around me is just and would not want to cheat me. And that is why you find a lot of time Persons who are good, they are always victims of uh, others, the, the exploitations of others. Because this, since this person is good, he believes every other person is good. He finds it difficult to distrust anybody. He trusts everybody. And as a result of that, because his judgment is wrong, he becomes a victim of other people's schemes. Our judgment is never perfect. We judge based on what we see and we can't see everything. We judge based on what we think we know and we don't know everything. We judge based on who we are. And the fact is, not everybody is like you. So Paul is teaching us today not to be too quick to pass judgment because only God has the capacity to bring to light the things now hidden in darkness. St. Paul's words are part of his response to the division in the Corinthian church because between those who were for Apollos and those who were for him. To those who were on the side of Paul, he says, who are you to declare me a saint? And to those who were against Paul, he says, even though I am not aware of anything against myself, my conscience is clean. I am not thereby acquitted. Paul's overall intention here was to break the division, to make people refrain from taking sides and realize that both Paul and Apollos are imperfect yet powerful instruments in the hands of God. I admire the fact that in his admonition to the Corinthians, Paul made no single negative statement about Apollos, who had been made a rival to him by the people. And this is the, the very, very instructive. This is one thing I admire about Paul. For many of us, in the shoes of Paul, the first thing we do is to condemn the other person. It's like a political campaign. So because we have heard that there is division among the people between this person and that person, and we, we, we are happy that there is division, and we are given opportunity to speak to the people, what do we say? Oh, that person is useless. That person is bad. That person did this and that person did that. Just to try to win more people to ourselves. Paul would not do that. Instead, Paul was attacking the root cause of division. There are many men and women today, pastors, preachers, priests, evangelists, bishops, and so on, who, like Paul and Apollos, have become sworn enemies today just because of what people were saying about them. Bear in mind that it is the devil's delight 
to see church leaders quarrel and fight. Yes. <laughs> the devil is happy when two priests are fighting. He's happy when pastors are beginning to throw blow. The devil is happy when there is commotion in the church. And you think that this priest or that priest or that, or that person is your problem. The devil is happy when there is commotion in your workplace. Then people are beginning to fight, carrying long faces, malice in the office. The devil doesn't want the work to succeed. That is why there is fighting. You know, I, I saw a short clip yesterday on social media by Mark Twain. And he said, when you take a hundred black ants, put them in a jar. Then take a hundred red ants, also known as fire ants, put them inside the same jar and close it. There will be peace. The ants will carry on their life as normal. There will be no problem as long as the jar is on the table. However, he said, if you take the jar and shake it, shake the jar, shake it vigorously, then drop the jar again. He said, do you know what will happen? The black ants we begin to fight the red ants. And there will be war. They will start fighting each other. Serious war amongst the ants in the jar. The black ants will say the red ants are the problem. And the red ants will say the black ones are the problem. You see, this is what is happening in society today. Men against women. Women against men, old against young, rich against poor, the fat against the thin. You know, sometimes boys against girls, girls against boys. We are fighting each other in society. We think the other person is the problem. But the problem is not the other person. It is the person that shook the jar. It's not the other camp. It's not APC versus PDP. It's not PDP versus Labour Party. No. Who shook the jar? Why are there divisions amongst us? That is the problem. No wonder St. Paul would say that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Man of God. You think that your fellow man of God is your problem. No. Your problem is the devil. Who wants to see you fight with your fellow man of God? Dear Father, your problem is not your fellow priest. Your problem is the devil. And if you make an enemy of your fellow priest, thinking that will solve your problem, you lie. The devil is happy to celebrate the enmity between you and your brother. Fight the person that shook the jar, not the fellow black ant, just because his color of skin is different from yours. Have the maturity to caution the person who brings gossip to you, he or she may just be plotting the stage to see you fight with your brother. There is no need for all these useless fights, malice and quarrels amongst us. Because, you know, when we, when we start fighting, when Paul is fighting with Apollos, what do you expect the people to do? What example are we showing to the people? How can I be fighting with my fellow priests? And then you are quarreling in your house. I will come and settle the quarrel. What do I want to tell you? If I cannot forgive my fellow priest, how do I tell the husband to forgive the wife or the wife to forgive the husband? Do not pronounce judgment before the time. 
In today's gospel passage, Jesus and his disciples became victims of premature judgment. The scribes and Pharisees were in the habit of displaying public piety to win the admiration of people. Meanwhile, their hearts were far from God. Jesus, disgusted with public piety, wanted through inner piety, that is, piety that required going into your room, shutting the door to pray. Don't have to, you don't have to display the fact that you're a prayer warrior. He said, your father who sees everything that is done in secret will reward you in secret. Jesus also warned against carrying long feasts while fasting so as not to let anyone know that you are fasting. It is possible that Jesus' disciples were fasting, but they were not showing it because they were practicing what Jesus Christ had taught them. And without trying to find out if Jesus' disciples were fasting secretly, they murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? There is danger in passing judgment before the time. There is danger in passing judgment before the time, before all the facts are exposed. Someone has come to tell you, he said, the, have you heard what this person said about you? Were you there when the person was saying it? Why should it be your business? Why should it be your concern what somebody said about you behind your back? And what makes you think that the person telling you what somebody said behind your back is your friend? What makes you think that the person actually wants your good? If the person really loves you, then the person would not tell you what others have said about you in your back. Because the same person who has come to tell you what others have said behind your back will still go to those others and tell them what you have said in response. Avoid judging people. Avoid condemning people. Let us, let us learn to grow above our petty misunderstandings. Let us learn to forgive let us learn to accommodate and love each other. We are brothers and sisters, one father, and we are walking in the same vineyard. There is no need for all this war and fight amongst us. There is no need for all these childish behaviors. There is no need for trying to use our position of power and authority to oppress and suppress others. Remember the warning of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, judge not that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you pronounce will be the judgment, will be the judgment that you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 2. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, give me the grace to grow deeper in the Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary. Thank you for joining us today in our Bible study. I hope this reflection, I hope this exercise as, uh, is, is quite worth the time. And I encourage you, if you have enjoyed listening to this, do well to share it with someone who you think will benefit also from it. God bless you. Happy weekend. Thanks for listening.